Good morning and praise the Lord. We want to begin with a word of prayer and then we will invite you into the viewing of the body. Once you view, you go get seated so that we can begin the service. Now, the word of God is true because it says that the grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely, people are grass. The saying is sure. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. For if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. To him who overcomes, I will give him the right to sit with me on the throne, just as I overcame and sat down with my father on his throne. I have known Noel for many years now, and one of the things that I have known about him is his love for Jesus and his commitment. There was no doubt at all. He talked about it, he expressed it, and he lived it. And so we may have lost him in body, but we've gained him in the spirit. So heaven is happier, and we all look forward to joining him. Let us pray. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your many, many, many blessings that we enjoy because of your grace and bounty. We thank you for the life of Noel and for the 55 years that you gave him to be a joy and delight to his parents, to be a joy and delight to his siblings. You connected him with his wife and you gave them a strong bond as a husband and wife. And we thank you for over 21 years that they have been together as a husband and wife. We thank you for that joy of living together. We also thank you for blessing them with their two daughters. We give you thanks. And for the years that you have been help, able to help him to impact on his daughters positively. That they are strong in faith today because their father stood for Jesus. And because your word is true, that we will leave this body, which is only like a tent, which is temporary, we thank you that now he's been transitioned into a permanent life of eternity. Therefore, Lord, through the power of the Holy Spirit and the ministry of your angels, would you come and minister to this family, the siblings who are here, his wife, his daughters, his nieces and nephews, and the extended families, and all of us as friends and colleagues, we pray that we may be strengthened by you. Be with us now, dear Lord, as we start this process of viewing the body, the, the small service we will do, and later the internments, and help us not to focus on what is temporary now, but to focus to what is eternal. We pray this in the name of God, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
back to view the body. So you can see it now. So when the family comes.
Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings, O oh mine, with ten thousand beside.
the splendor of a king Clothed in majesty Let all the earth rejoice Let all the earth rejoice He wraps himself in light And darkness tries to hide And trembles at his voice Trembles at his voice How great is our God Sing with me How great is our God And all will see how great How great
thousand stories of what they think you're like but i've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night as you tell me that you're pleased and that i'm never alone you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. You're a good, good father. It's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am, it's who I am. I've seen many searching for answers far and wide, but I know we're all for answers. Only you provide, cause you know just what we need before we say a word you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and i'm loved by you it's who i am it's who i am it's who i am you're a good good father it's who you are it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To us, you are perfect, Lord. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am, You're a good, good father. It's who you are. 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 And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. 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 Lord, you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all. Good morning and welcome to our short service in celebrating the life of our departed brother, Noel Johnson, whom the Lord has called to himself. And because of the faith that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to stand and sing the hymn, Amazing Grace.
request the clergy, uh, Bishop jo Julius, if you could come. This seat would create some little space behind there for anybody who would like to sit. Let me ask Bishop, please come uh, sit here. Uh, I am told of a clergy from uh, Parklands. Oh, there was also a clergy from the Anglican Church. Captain, I saw you. Please come be next to the Bishop here so that we can leave the um, the families and friends to sit on that end. Please come. Let us now continue. We have come together now to celebrate and later to lay the body of our departed brother, Noel Johnson, whom the Lord has called to himself. Yet we believe that since Jesus Christ died and rose again, it will be for those who die in Christ for God will bring them to life with Jesus. Heavenly Father, in your Son, Jesus Christ, you have given us a true faith and a sure hope. We pray this morning that you may strengthen this faith and this hope in us all the days of our lives so that we may live as those who believe in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection to eternal life. Amen. The Word of God reminds us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 from verse 2 that for everything there is a season, a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck, a time to weep and a time to laugh, 
a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather them, a time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to cast away, a time to rend and a time to sow, a time to be silent and a time to speak. But the word of God continues to encourage us through the words of Psalm 121. David said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He who will not let your foot be moved, he who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel with neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun will not hurt you by day, nor moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Please take your seats. It's now time for the tributes, and I'm going to invite people in the order provided. So, Mrs. Annie Clement, on behalf of NAV Jivan Assembly. The second one is Francis Esteen, on behalf of the Fellowship of Asian Christians in Kenya. The next one is Reverend Victor Kemani of pa pa Parkland Baptist Church. And then, after that, we'll be able to invite the family and friends to give their short tributes. This is meant to be a short service. As you can see, it's a small space, so we need to finish. Uh, but still, give our brother a befitting send-off before we go to Langata for the internments. So kindly, let's follow that order. Mrs. Ann, welcome. Good morning, uh, everyone. I'm standing in place of Anne Clement. Uh, praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, my name is Harold Bangera, standing here on behalf of Navjeevan Assembly, representing the pastor, the leaders, and every congreg co congregant member of the church. As a congregation, we are in shock and still unable to accept the reality that Brother Noel is no longer with us. But there is great hope and comfort that he who has died in Christ shall also live with Christ. So we will all see him in the Lord's day. Amen. Ten years ago, Brother Noel was one of the vision bearers in the formation of Navjeevan Assembly, along with Pastor Binoy and Pastor Emil Chandran. He was a board member, treasurer, and one of the deacons of Navjeevan Assembly. He was part of every single ministry activity of NJA, as he was zealous and passionate for God's work. From arranging the church for worship, welcoming people before service, checking on the music system and media, being part of worship and interceding, announcing, organizing and arranging ministry events, cooking happily on church events, sharing the word. There are just countless things, the list goes on and on. He uses gifting and talents for God's kingdom and its purposes. 
He always pulled, pushed, and encouraged people to do missionary work in a stricter style, maybe because of his working in the Indian in Navy. At the same time, he was kind and compassionate, ready to help anyone in need. If he came to know someone was in need or any kind of help, he would be the first person to help them. He tirelessly ran for church work, happily and willingly. He was happy always, talking with people according to their level. With children, he played like a child. To newcomers to the church, he was warm and welcoming. Brother Noel served the Lord together with his wife, Susan, and the girls, Samara and Sharon, at Navjeevan. They are, they are an example like Joshua. As for me and my family, we will serve the Lord. The challenge of today's pandemic is not only medical, but also profoundly spiritual as it is prophesied in the word of God. As a church, we are all praying to the Lord for the situation the world is in now. God has allowed us to go through this stormy situation as we are still in the fallen world. But he has promised he is with us in this storm. Even more recently, when Noel was sick, he joined us in every online evening prayer meeting every day. He was replying with a happy spirit, with amens and hallelujahs to every message sent to him until Tuesday evening. On Wednesday night, he went to be with the Lord. As a church, we are grieving and mourning for the loss of our dear brother. But we are not grieving the way the world grieves, but with the hope and joy that we will meet one day in God's presence. As Christ's words comforts us, says, I am the, resurrected, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. Therefore, we are comforting each other with these words as a Thessalonian church. Now, our prayers, prayer is, may the God of comfort comfort every one of us in this trying time, especially Brother Noel's family. Amen. Thank you. Good morning. On behalf of folk board and our chairman who is not able to come today, I stand here with heavy heart. It was with great shock and deeper sadness I began to read this eulogy for our fallen great hero, friend and our dearest brother Noel. <coughs> Noel Johnson was born on the 16th of June 1965 in Belgium, India. He is the middle son amongst the three brothers and one sister. After serving in the Indian Navy for over a decade, Noel came back to Kenya in 1998 and began his illustrious career in Mombasa at East African Marine and later shifted to Nairobi, worked as a specialized boiler and compressor engineer. I think it is printed and given to all of you. He successfully completed many projects and become very popular in the marketplace. He ventured into his own private business and started Instrumentation Engineering Limited in 2010 and has single-handedly got the company to where it is today. Noel, the great caring father to Samara and Sharon and a loving husband to Susan, Noel has shown great commitment of exemplary service in all aspects of his life, be it for the family work or for the church ministry work. He has always poured his energy and offered his best. Since the inception of the folk, that is Fellowship of Asian Christians in Kenya, he played a very vital role to make sure that we remain together focused for the growth 
of the outreach ministry and took up the very challenging position as a board treasurer. He has always been a key pivotal figure in our functions and willingly did everything. He took up any and every challenging work upon his own shoulders to glorify the kingdom work of the Lord. He has always kept his home open for the Lord's kingdom work and offered great hospitality to every visitor in a very pleasant manner and with good heart. Noel played a vital role in every annual COL, the Celebration of Light event, as our MC with his jovial style, but very professional approach to make sure all spectators were comfortable. His charismatic leadership and style has helped folk to achieve the great success to date. We salute Noel. Noel has played a major role in the formation of NJ Church at the South Sea and later accepted God's call and was ordained to serve as a deacon, as you heard from Brother Harrell. He held the finance portfolio with great integrity. He was an integral pillar of the church, supporting it from all aspects of running and to continue spreading the gospel work. He was a very gifted and passionate in music and performed as a worship leader, which has been his family heritage. He also worked with various churches in the Rift Valley and Nyanza provinces, having planted a strong seeds of the powerful gospel work, which have brought many people to Christ. Socially, he was also a very active member of the Kerala Association and willingly contributed for many charitable projects. Today we give our tribute to him with a salute and say thank you, Noel, for the way he has brightened our lives, even though God granted him a very short life on this universe, and we will always feel cheated that our Lord has taken him from us so quickly. We thank God and remain grateful for his great life and the footprint he has left with us. Noel has gone back to his eternal home, guided by his faith and by the light of those he has loved and lost. He has left many good memories, but left us with grief. His broad, smiling face will remain with us forever as he sails into the wind, carrying on towards a new and wondrous place. We will continue praying for his family, in particular his wife Susan and two daughters, Sharon and Samara. God has a plan to prosper them and not to harm them but to give them hope and a bright future. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. I stand here on behalf of Parklands Baptist Church. We would like to convey our sincere condolences to the family, uh, to Noel's wife, Susan, his daughters, Samara and Sharon, his brother, his brothers, Bobby, Sam, and his other siblings, friends, colleagues, and ministry co-workers at Fork. I first met Noel through Deacon Dr. Cowper, one of our senior deacons at Parklands Baptist Church three years ago, when we were planning a visit to one of our mission stations in Moranga Town. I remember Deacon Cowper uh, referring me severally to Noel, and uh, the moment I got in touch with him, I didn't bother calling Dr. Kaupa anymore. Noel was very instrumental and played a leading role in ensuring that the needy young boys and girls in our mission station got bursaries to support in support of their higher education through the Fellowship of Asian Christians in Kenya. It is because of this support that the dreams of many young boys and girls from Moranga are being realized. 
today. Children of school, due to lack of fees, children who not have been able to complete their education. But we thank God that through the Fellowship of Vain Christians in Kenya and also our brother Noel, the dreams of these children are being realized today. It's our brother Noel. Three key uh, values come out. Number one, diligence. Noel was persistent. Noel was persistent with what he put his hands to do. He was not sloppy. I think he must have picked this value from his military background. He never let the ball fall and he followed his assignment to the very end. Second value is the value of commitment. Noel served God with dedication and utmost devotion. You could count on him. He gave all that he could without reservation. He sacrificially devoted himself for in servant leadership. And with a smile on his face, and whenever I met Noel, he was always having a radiant smile, which came out very brightly and very infectious, infectiously. The third value about Noel, Noel had a sense of humor. Noel had a sense of humor, and I remember this day when we had a folk festi uh, uh, festival of light celebration at the uh, uh, museum auditorium. When he was the master of ceremony, he brightened up the audience and kept, kept us awake and laughing as he was uh, the master of ceremony. Today, we celebrate him and we thank God for his life. And as the Bible says in John 14, verse 1 to 6, let our hearts not be troubled. Let our hearts not be troubled. Why? Because Noel was a born-again believer. He knew Jesus as his personal savior. Noel knew the way. Noel knew the truth. Noel knew the life. Brother Noel, rest in peace in the bosom of Jesus Christ till we shall meet again. May God bless you. We now invite the family, please come. And now for the family tributes, we will start with uh, Major General Silver Johnson, who was his oldest brother. Noel Johnson was born a very sweet baby, and I remember we, the oldest siblings, nicknaming him Sweetie. He grew up to be a fine young man with splendid qualities of a head and heart. Always very kind and generous, he wanted to get along with everyone and was loved by all who knew him. He could be relied upon to achieve the impossible. There was never a no from his side. A very lively personality known for his present wit and sense of humor and helping nature, which made him popular with, all, with friends all over the globe. As a young brave man, he served in the Indian Navy for 15 years with Elan and was respected for his leadership and qualities of character. To me, he was a caring and affectionate brother who always tried to give us pleasant surprises. He visited our home in many a military station and on my 60th birthday, he surprised me by traveling all the way from Nairobi to Bangalore to celebrate that landmark day. He was of great help to Sarah, who is bringing up Swapnil at Belgaum in my absence. Most importantly, he was a wonderful husband, a loving and doting father to his two pretty girls whom he adored. He will always be remembered for the love and affection he showered on each one of us. In his last few days at the hospital, he fought COVID bravely. Noel, you left a bit too early leaving behind deep grieving family and a vacuum no one can ever fill. We never got a chance to bid you farewell. We will miss you dearly for the rest of our days, dearest Noel. Rest in peace. 
My only consolation is in knowing you, the Lord Jesus, as his personal Savior. And so I can boldly proclaim, today he is with the Lord, Dad, and Mom in paradise. Amen. Um, the next tribute is from Sarah J Koshi Johnson, his oldest sister-in-law. To my loving brother-in-law and friend who has left us for a better world, we are absolutely shattered at your hasty exit without even a goodbye, leaving our family twisted and knotted. Even if I pinch myself, I cannot believe we will never see your smile, large heart and vivacious self again. Where did you go, I wonder, in such a teary hurry? You always shadowed us everywhere till now, part and parcel of every family get-togethers, weddings and holidays. The last time we met, you promised to come again soon, but this time it seems you have broken your promise. Our doors will ever remain open in the hope that you will come back someday, but I know I am making an unrealistic wish. The place you have gone to is beyond the horizon, far, far away, and there is no turning back from there. A beautiful place, peaceful and serene, free from all worldly cares. But certainly I am not happy the way you left. This COVID virus got better of a strong person like you, someone so mentally strong and who fought to the end. I'm left with loads of beautiful memories of our growing up days, even before I knew my husband to be. The summer classes we went to, picnics and all the prank pranks we played on people, how you helped me with my baby, the first battery operated car you gave Swapnil after your first trip to Singapore, and more than anything, the abundant love you showered on me, especially when I needed a pillow to lean on is unforgettable. You have left two lovely daughters at a time they needed you the most. Look down upon them and bless them as they take many important decisions in life. We will miss you till we live. There will be a huge vacuum always which can never be filled. One chair will always rem remain vacant at all our fa family get-togethers. May you rest in eternal peace, dearest Noel, till we all meet again. Easter celebrations will never be the same again at home without mommy and you. The most beautiful things in life are not the things. They are people, places, memories and pictures. They are feelings and moments and smiles and laughter. Anonymous. This is the gift you have left behind for us. Au revoir, dearest brother-in-law Noel. No Yankee, Noel Grandpa. We would now like to invite uh, Samuel Johnson, his older brother. Uh, good morning. My name is Samuel Johnson. I am the older brother of uh, Noel. Noel is 10 years younger to me. I'm not going to repeat all the things that my older brother has already said, but I just want to say that we loved our brother a lot. We're going to miss him, but we are happy that he knows the Lord and that he will, and God will embrace him into his kingdom and we will meet him one day when our time comes. Thank you. The next tribute is on behalf of Lavinia Rubdi, who is his oldest niece. My heart is heavy and saddened as I write this tribute. My uncle, or sweetie to a lot of us, embody the outgoing, the charming, the life of a party, the tall, the handsome, the lark with an amazing voice, and an example of unwavering faith in the Lord. It was easy for you to connect to the young, the old, everybody in between, because you had the unique ability to empathize and relate in a very easy manner. Any conversation always started with a joke, a funny line, and a roar of laughter. It mattered to you to check, on, check in on us, guide us to keep everybody around you happy. It's no easy feat, but you manage pretty well. You taught us about what caring was about, what sharing was about, and what compassion was about. You leave behind a big void, but we promise to love and share 
and uphold your beautiful children and wife in the same way you loved and shared and cared for us. Um, the next tribute is from Sopnal Johnson, his oldest nephew. Noel Uncle, sweetie, as he was called by his parents and loved ones, was one of the most loving, caring, and large-hearted souls I have ever met. All through my life, he has been an uncle who has always given me a patient hearing and helped me discuss both professional and personal challenges. I knew if refuge ever needed to be sought, his to tall and broad stature had enough room to provide for one more human being who walked on this earth. In his youth, he served in the Indian Navy. His colleagues always talked volumes about his zest for life, his solid sense of loyalty and professionalism. I would hear stories of how uncle would jump off the ship deck into the waters of the Arabian Sea on a slight gesture from the captain of INS uh, Ganga. I would also hear of him knowing every nook and cranny and cool ha hangouts in the naval cities of Mumbai, Cochin, Vizak, where he served. He was a big Hindi movie buff, a Ravina Tandon fan, and had the appetite to watch movies from late evening into the wee hours of the morning. I'm referring to the 90s. As time went by, Noel Uncle chose to become an entrepreneur in East Africa. He has left a lasting impression in the boiler, compressor, and instrumentational community where he has, was known to make things happen when others couldn't. He overcame a ton of challenges through his life, always with a beaming smile that could put a fl flaming sun to shame. He was always there for the weak, the needy, the brokenhearted, the elderly, the downtrodden, and the orphan pets too. He was someone who wanted to see a united family. Whenever he got a chance, he worked hard to build bridges. When I lost my grandmother eight months back, I could never imagine I'd lose Noel Uncle before the next Easter. And while I might never know why God be be not a man so strong in faith so soon, in his New Year message to me, he, he did mention to keep a positive attitude no matter what happens as the year progressed. He asked me to find the good in every situation. Right from my childhood, the sketch that I had in mind, my mind's eyes of Noel Uncle was that of a strong, solid pillar on which everyone could lean on. A pillar who can take on a lot and yet smile effortlessly. Today, that pillar is gone, but the virtues of unconditional love, generosity, resilience, gratitude, and faith that he laid will remain in each one of us whose life he has touched. In the afterlife, I have no doubts Noel Uncle will be waiting for me with his outstretched arm and that beaming smile, which despite the passing of time, will still put a flaming sun to shame. The next tribute is on behalf of Dipali Johnson, who is his third niece. Dearest Noel Uncle, it is just so unthinkable that you are no more, that we cannot meet you again, cannot hear your hearty laughter or your booming voice anymore. Why did you leave us so soon? Ever since I have known him, I have been in awe of the metal that he is made of. He has been a pillar of strength, a generous and extremely large-hearted friend to everyone, and bursting with laughter and good humor always. As a young bride that came into the Johnson family, I saw that Noel Uncle was the life of the party, be it our engagement, wedding, or any other occasion where we met. He always made it a point to check in on Sopnil and me, encourage and motivate us in everything we aspire to do. He would take the pains to meet us wherever we were, despite his busy schedule. He was overjoyed at the arrival of our little baby, Verdan. Noel Uncle would call us on video to see his antics. He very much longed to hold Vardhan in his arms and play with him. For all the struggles that he went through, he always had a smile on his face and kept his unwavering faith in the one above. Losing him is not just an irreplaceable loss for our family, but also for the multitude of lives he has touched across the world. Nolanko, may you enjoy eternal peace. There's no sorrow. May you find a special place with the Father in heaven. There will always be a special place in our hearts for you forever. Um, the next three tributes are from um, my mom's side of the family. So the first is from his sister-in-law, Susan's youngest sister. Noel Achachin was not only a brother-in-law, but a dear own brother to me. I've been blessed to know him since I was 18. I constantly found an incredible support and encouragement from him. I always admired the way he loved and cared for my sister and my two beautiful nieces. 
His loving and effable nature will be profoundly missed and I know we will meet him again on that beautiful show. The next is from Shiji Matthew, his co-brother, who is Susan's younger sister, youngest brother-in-law. Noel Johnson, whom I fond fondly and affectionately called Noel Achachan, was a true friend and was an elder brother to me. Noel Achachan had a profound and deep spiritual conviction concerning the word of God. It governed how he lived his earthly life, always a generous and compassionate human being. He had an ardent sense of humor coupled with patient ears for others. We as a family will deeply miss him and will fondly remember him. In a sweet by and by, we shall meet you on that beautiful show. And the last is from uh, his niece, one of his nieces, Rachel Verghese. Noel Uncle was one of the most loving, kind-hearted souls I've ever met. He cared with a passion I've never seen before. All my life, he has been a solid pillar of support, source of strength and guidance. I was sure I could lean on his strong shoulders and hold his sturdy hands anytime. My heart is full of good memories and I will forever be grateful for all the great times I've shared with him over the years, waiting for that day when heaven calls and we meet again. Um. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You know, before God, we have no questions. There is only answers. Initially, I know God was speaking to me through the word giving me so many answers which my mind was not taking it but slowly I could take it I could hear the voice of the Holy Spirit giving me so many answers what is ahead of me the answer is God is good and only good will happen in my life the answer is in everything God works for good, those who love him and call according to his purpose. And the answer is, he is the resurrection and life. And those who are in Christ, even if they die, they will live. I know God has sent Noel in this earth for a purpose. He protected him for the past 57 years. And whatever purpose God had sent him here, he had finished us beautifully with his help and he has called him to be with him in the most beautiful place, peaceful, and he can worship there 24-7 because he was a man who always liked to worship non-stop. I know the body what he saw here is just the shell who was holding the real Noel and that will go down here in this mud but the real Noel is with Jesus rejoicing and my sister told me one important thing that now it was only all this time it was only Jesus who was with for you in heaven but now your dearest is there in heaven, sitting with Jesus. He will do marvelous things in our life. I believe strongly, if I'm standing here like this, it is not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. I want to show the world how Christ is living. You know, in the beginning of this year, I was in India because of my mother's health. The promise I received from our church in India is from Isaiah 54. We all, when we get promise, we'll claim some promises which was there. But sometimes in our situation challenges, you know, some words will speak to us very powerfully, which I never noticed all this time. I was reading that verse, but I never noticed till yesterday. In Isaiah 44, 5 it says, from now on, your creator will be your husband. And the Lord of hosts is his name. That really touched me. 
I knew that was that promise was for me. Now all this time till his death I was calling the Lord Jesus as my Lord. But now I can call him as my husband as my and my Lord. And when we read that verse beyond down, we can see your children will be taught by the Lord and great will be their peace. I know. That as I used to claim that verse every day, but now it has become more meaningful for me. I know their father, the earthly father is with Jesus, but now the heavenly father is there for them to teach them in every area to guide them so that they can lean on them. I believe that and I want to thank every one of you who stood by us with prayers and with support, encouraging words, my relatives, my pastors, my friends, my fellow believers, especially I want to take up two names, my beloved brothers, God used to stand, stood by me as a pillar. If I'm standing here, it's because of them. No words to thank them and their families. And I want to thank the Lord that he has given, us, given me a wonderful husband. I have no doubt he was a wonderful husband, what I can ever get in my life. And he has blessed my children with a loving and caring father which has always a good memory has left with us. And I want to say, because he lives, I can also live. The world cannot say that, but I can say that. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because to me you know I know they will be thinking because my fa I lost my father when I was small but we didn't lack anything till now the same Jesus is there with us my every step before I'm looking to my husband and my Lord he will guide me every step every move I make I will hold on to his hand and I'll move and I will show the world my Jesus is a living God, not a dead God. Hallelujah. Uh, praise God, everybody. Um, before we start, my dad always used to love glorifying the Lord. So we're going to do that this morning. God is good. And all the time, that's his nature. And before, okay, so, um, okay, um, uh, okay, since I was a little girl, um, even closer than I was to my mom, it was always my dad. <laughs> I looked up to my dad so much. He was um, one of the greatest people I've ever known. And I even remember when he used to travel, he used to travel a lot. I used to fall sick. And um, mom thought it was just, you know, a sickness that would come. But then gradually everyone figured out that it was because my dad traveled and I couldn't see my dad that um, I fell sick. And uh, my dad taught me everything I knew. Um, a lot of people, one thing I can say that I'm proud of myself is when people look at me, they tell me, you look like your dad. And you have the characteristics of your dad. You walk like your dad. You talk like your dad. And 
my dad always encouraged me to do my best to you know be at the top but one thing he always taught me was make sure your family is together have you called big mama have you called big papa Wh when is the last time you talked to bobby uncle when is the last time you talked to roll he always made sure that you know everyone was connected he even 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 he even if he had the slightest body pain, someone would call him and he'd just run. My dad didn't care about himself. He always put people in front of him. My dad taught me love. He taught me courage. He taught me strength. He taught me to be someone that the world can look at and say, that is a strong woman. But most of all, he taught me how to love Christ. Every time you'd look at my dad, even during prayer, family prayers, he'd be singing, singing, singing for an hour. My mom, my sister, and I look at him like, can you pray? <laughs> just pray, you know, we have things to do. But then he'd just look at us and be like, stop it. <laughs> and then the Lord has called him home. And um, the night my dad um, passed away, um, we, call, uh, we called a pastor, uh, a pastor from India, and I couldn't take it because it's my dad. God took my dad, and um, I don't want to say what I said uh, that night. Bobby, Uncle, and Lena Auntie were there. But um, when we called the pastor, I said, Any kind of papa, where no? I want my dad. And then um, the pastor told me, why do you want your dad to live in a tent when he's going to live in mansions made of gold and walk on gold and glorify the Lord? And he also told me, your daddy loved to worship the Lord. Why do you want to take him from a place that is just full of worship? So um, even today when, I was, when they said, let's go view the body, I thought, you know, I, I'd see my dad very sick. But when I saw my dad, it's, he's not dead, he's asleep. He's just asleep here because he's alive and he's living. Even on this thing, it doesn't say we're mourning the death of Noel Johnson. It says we're celebrating the life that he lived on earth, and we have to continue celebrating it as he's in heaven. My cousin told me that, um, Sharon, how lucky are you? You have two fathers rooting for you in heaven. You know, now you're going to get double the portions. I'm jealous. And I was like, I think he's rooting for all of us. And um, my uncles, Bobby Uncle and Big Papa, have always been there for us through every step of the way. Since I was little till today, they've always been there. Rina Auntie, Maria Auntie, Rina and Big Mama. My aunties have always been there. And uh, the last time I saw my dad face to face was the day when he got tested. He was in bed. And I was going to stay in Mariantri because my dad forced me to go. He's like, Sharon, you have some problems. You can't stay in this house. If you get it, you know, that's not going to be good. And even at that time, I was like, OK, Papa, you take care of yourself. And he's like, you don't worry about me. You take care of yourself. No matter what he went through, he always thought about others. And I remember every single niece and nephew from mom and his side both every time they'd call even for roshan when he'd come home he'd he'd always make roshan get off his whatever he's doing and spend time with the family for Rol, he always told Rol, Rol, you know you're the biggest boy of this house you have to take care of people you're going to study take care of yourself walk in faith walk in christ all his nieces all his nephews always had that one thing that no matter what, Papa would always give a call. And that is something Papa always told me and told each and every one of us. Keep your family close. Taught us love, taught us compassion, courage, strength, and boldness. And I can stand here and testify that my God has taken my Papa to him because where we go, where we come from is where we go. We cannot stay on this earth. And I just thank God that he's taken Papa to a place where Papa is happy. You know, if Papa sees us crying, he's like, what are these people doing? Why are they crying? 
No, I'm, I'm, an, I'm rejoicing. Why are you crying? So to all his families, to his friends, to everyone watching, Papa is not gone. He's asleep. He's alive and he's well. He's healthy. And one day we will see Papa. Praise the Lord. Amen. Um, there are a lot of things that have been said about my dad. So I don't want to repeat because it'll just be the same thing. And there's, you can spend days just talking ab about my father. He was a good father. I'm so grateful. He taught me a lot of things. Um, but one thing I'll be forever grateful for is that he gave me Jesus. That's the best thing he could have given to me. And when I was just listening to what everyone had to say about my dad, I was remembering a verse in, I think, Matthew, where Jesus was telling his di disciples, you shall know people by their fruits. You shall know who they serve by their fruits. And when we look at Papa, his fruits are love, joy, patience, kindness, helpfulness, gentleness. And those are the fruits of the Holy Spirit. So I am so sure when he was here, it was the Holy Spirit that worked through him. And now he is in heaven. That is my assurance. When I found out, at first, yes, I told God, Lord, you can raise people from the dead. You can bring my dad back. But if it is your timing, then you will take him. And it was my dad's timing to go. And he is with Jesus and he's rejoicing. And what my dad showed me, the way he loved me, the way he comforted me, the way he was there for me, he was a perfect representation of my father in heaven. And that's why today I can stand and I have no fear of tomorrow. People may see that maybe I don't have a father, but I do have a father and his name is Jesus. And he's going to be there for me, even more than my earthly father could be there for me. And I have no doubt, no fear of my future. I have no questions, no complaints to God on why he took him. How could he take him? Nothing. I just have faith that God only works for good. He only does the best. If it is this time, I know there are people here, people watching me, who may have questions on why God, who are still in shock. But I pray that God will fill you with his peace. You know, I'm also shocked in how I can stand, how I could see my father inside, how I have such comfort and peace. But the Bible says that when God gives you peace, it's a peace that surpasses human understanding. And I want to say that this is not, I'm not in denial. I'm not, I'm not in a state of shock where I still believe my dad is going to come back. No, I'm in a point where I have comfort from the Holy Spirit. I have assurance that my dad is in a good place. And I have assurance that I have a heavenly father who is going to lead me through until one day either Jesus will come back to resurrect his church and we will meet together up in the heavens or he will take me from here and I will be up there with him. And so that is, that is my, I just thank God for my dad. I love him so much. He will never be forgotten. That is for sure. And I will do my best to make him proud. It was his desire to see me as a doctor. And he's going to see me over there in heaven as a doctor. I'm going to make him proud. And I just love him. And I thank God for his life. The family was supposed to s sing together. Um, kindly come. Um, the song we're going to sing is a Hindi song. The lyrics are actually on the booklet. And it was one of my dad's favorite songs. He loved to sing it. And for those who may not understand the meaning, it just says, my hope, my trust, my faith, everything is in God. In the toughest of situations, it is only Jesus I can run to. He is the one who saved me from death. He is the one who rescues me from any disturbing situations, any problems. He is there for me. And so in everything, I will lift my hands and always lift the name of Jesus on high. Yeshu Masi Barosa Mera Tu hi sahara hai mera Mushkil samay mein Tu hi dilasa Saat rahega 
now done one hour time has uh, gone but sorry I am strict in programs unless you are very strict to take a minute otherwise I will not allow uh, otherwise we will get into a problem um, because I know you for many years I'll allow you a minute Thank you, Reverend. Praise the Lord. God is good. Uh, today, I stand here on behalf of uh, the staff and workers who used to work with uh, Noel. 
we came all of us to pay our tribute to our boss, our beloved boss. And to me, my mentor in terms of uh, thermal engineering is the one who has taught me all this. I've known Noel since 2001, and I was still working in Unilever. So it's more than 20 years I've known Noel. He's my close companion. He's my family friend. The entire family knows me. And today, I stand to say that on behalf of the entire staff, I would like to convey my deepest word of condolences to the entire family and friends. And I pray that God Almighty will give you strength during these trying moments. Losing someone you love is at the topmost list of the most difficult challenge facing in life. Please know that you are not alone in this, even though it seems that way right now. But you can count on our support. Hallelujah. I want to say this. Uh, I, will, I will leave you by this word. Eh? First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 14, where it says, Believers who have died, that is the heading. Verse 13 says, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who, who slept in death so that you do not grieve like those rest, the, like the rest of the mankind who have no hope. Verse 14 says this, For we have believed that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that the God will bring Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in him. Hallelujah. I want to just let you know that Together with me today, we have uh, our brother, Rohan. Rohan has been in charge. Rohan, say hi to wave at the congregation. Rohan has been in charge of KSI company. And I've been in charge of Kilimo Africa. And then we have our brother, Oliver. Oliver, wave at the congregation. Oliver is a project manager. He's in charge of all the projects which are ongoing. And then we have our accountant, Beatrice. Wave wherever you are. Beatrice, she's our canton. And then the entire staffs, where are you? Our working colleagues, they are all here. We are together with you. And may the Lord strengthen you. Susan, we will always be with you and will support you where necessary. May the Lord strengthen you. The Lord is coming. Let us prepare. Amen. Well done. You've done very well. This man, I've known him for many years since those days of... Um, Unilever, and he's a wonderful man. Now, allow me to now bring this to a close by allowing the clergy who are remaining here to just bring their words of condolence. Um, maybe I should say at this time, I came to know the family of Johnsons through Bishop. When he was provost, I was his deputy at All Saints Cathedral. I remember one time we went to Thika with you on our way back, we came to visit uh, uh, Bobby and Rena and their sons. And that's how I started meeting this family. So Bishop, you handed me over uh, this family. And I have kept the friendship now for those many, many years. And that's why we are here to support the family. So allow me to give the Bishop and Captain uh, a moment to give their Thank you very much, Provost. Uh, Jensen, I'm happy to have known him. Um, and I'm happy that he knew me and uh, he knows me where he is. He has, um, has become a challenge to me as a servant of God. I am yet to know someone who is such committed to serving the Lord and loving God so committedly than uh, Jensen. I just want to, maybe most of the people who know him know the, the Christmas, um, the celebration of Christmas. He has a unique style of uh, celebrating Christmas. He has all, he's used to carry all, some of us into his car uh, so that we go around in many houses to, just to sing. You didn't have to, have to be um, you know, a choralist or a special 
you know, singer. He wanted you to, to sing for the people in, that, um, in those families. I will always remember that, and as a person who we want to see champion the, the, the gospel of God, I will always want to see that we sing uh, carols in people's house, not us going to, um, going to the church, the venue of the church, but us going to people's house. And I'm um, grateful to have known his family. Take heart. I have heard your, 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 your sentiments. They are true uh, that um, you are not pretending. You love Jesus. And uh, Jesus is going to be with you all the way. And your husband, <laughs> though not in the physical sense, is with you. Thank you very much indeed. Susan, Sharon and Samara, Samuel and Bobby and your families, I share this moment in terms of grief and sorrow and the joy of the faith in Christ Jesus. On my own behalf and Esther, my wife, the girls, our condolences to you. Count on our prayers as we continue to witness of Christ. Noel was a friend and a great evangelist. Thank you. We then stand to sing Nearer My God to Thee.
kindly take your seats. For those who are clergy here, I don't know whether you've gone to a funeral and you're searching in your heart, what will you tell those people? Have you ever gone to such a funeral? I know you have. Then you get there and you realize those guys are preaching to you. And that's how I feel. Because I came asking the Lord, Lord, would you guide my heart to know how to comfort? Because what happens, and it's biblical, is the Bible says that God is the God of all comfort. So what God does is to comfort me so that I can comfort you. You are comforted so that you comfort me. It's a symbiotic relationship we have as human beings that we receive comfort from God, then we share with each other. So when I see the family, when I see Susan, when I see the daughters expressing their faith, and I can tell it's out of conviction that they are doing that, and sharing scripture and convictions, I, I feel I don't need to preach. We need to go. But I'll say a little, uh, uh, then we pray for the family and leave. As I said earlier, I have known this family for, for the years that have been in the cathedral. It's now coming to about 11 years in the next about two months. And uh, I came in, in 2010, and I was deputizing the bishop. And uh, bishop was, and I, I told you this uh, those days, he was very concerned about the Asian Christians. And so we would go for sangat, we would go for family meetings to meet them. And it's through him that I came to know Bobby and Rina. And we became friends, even their children. I've seen them grow. And I've known the two young uh, and growing. Now um, I was amazed today, life has changed so quickly that you're now looking not as girls, but mature ladies. Uh, that is interesting what life does. And we, I would visit Bobby anytime I wanted to. And um, whenever we went there, uh, Noel and the family came. And I can remember many things about them. One is their love for worship. Because whenever we met, the four would lead us in worship. And it was like very natural for them to lead in worship. It doesn't happen. That's not the case in any fa every family. That you have a husband, a wife, and daughters who can all worship. There are people who are gifted differently. Uh, there are people who are more musical than others. But to see a family that, one, gifted in music, but also um, very uh, committed to worshiping the Lord, that is a special grace that you had received. And um, when uh, I was called by Bobby, I, I went home and I told my wife, Noel is sick. And my wife was asking me, Remind me of Noel. Uh, and he, my wife was, was confusing Noel and Samuel. I said, no, no, not the Mombasa one. The other one with two daughters and a wife. I was describing. Then my wife said, the ones that sing and worship, you can see, she could identify you because of that grace and gifting that God has given you. And I want to, be, uh, to, to agree with everyone who has spoken that he had... Uh, uh, a spirit that was very different. And maybe by birth, there are people who are naturally gifted, but also because of his love for Jesus, you could, he didn't need to tell you he's a Christian, isn't it? There are people who, who are very quick to say they are Christians, but there are people who don't need to tell you they are Christians. Why? Jesus has percolated every part of their life that it, you can't miss it. And uh, there's a quote that I love from Mother Teresa who said, it's a disappointment when people come looking for Jesus in you only to find you. Why? Because they never came to find you. What were they looking for? They were coming to find Jesus 
only to find me. According to Mother Teresa, that's a disappointment. As Christians, when people come to us, they're not coming to look for us. They're coming to find Jesus. So when they miss Jesus in us, yet we speak so much about him, or we are associated with him, it's actually a disappointment. And so I was saddened uh, to hear that he's died and died early. My heart went to Susan and the daughters, and I wondered, what do I tell them? But when I called them on the side and asked them how they feel, they have gone through the same process every human being goes. Denial, complain, feeling angry even with God. That is common. It's normal. I don't think God would be surprised if we didn't do that. Just like if my children came and complained to me, would I be surprised? No, I know. They are entitled to complain to me. But beyond that, the Holy Spirit is ministering to them. It's true they have lost. It's true the gap will be there and they will feel it. But there is also something greater than that. There is God in heaven who takes care of us. And Susan, I was very happy that you know God is a husband to every lady. But now it's not just general, now it's personal. It's about you, that Jesus, God, will be your husband and will teach your daughters and they will miss nothing because their Father in heaven will take care of them. To me, I got those words and I felt you're in the right path. But definitely you have a strong family. The Johnsons, for the years that I have known you, Samuel, Bobby, and Noel, and the others, it's a tight family. And we would sometimes meet at Bobby's, and the house would be full uh, and eat together, worship together, and have communion with mom, now gone to be with the Lord. And so you are not groping in darkness. You know where to go if you needed help. And allow me to just read very few words of Paul to Timothy. Uh, and then um, bring out only three things, and then we conclude. Second Timothy, chapter 1, beginning at verse 6. 2 Timothy 1, 6. For this reason I remind you to fan the flame, the gift of God, which is in you, through the laying on of my hands. For the Spirit of God gave us, for the Spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self discipline. So do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord or of me, his prisoner. Rather, join me who join with me in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He has saved us and called us to a holy, live, a holy life, not because of anything we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. This grace was given to us in Christ before the beginning of the time. But it has now been revealed through the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. And of this gospel, I was appointed a herald and an apostle and teacher. That is why I am suffering as I am. Yet this is no cause for shame, because I know whom I have believed, and I am convinced that he is able to guard what I have entrusted to him until the last day. Hallelujah. If we were to do Bible study, uh, this scripture is rich and deep and wide. We can finish today. But take your time, Susan, your daughters, the family of the Johnsons, and all of us here, take time to reflect on this scripture. 
the first thing that Paul wants Timothy to do is to fan into flame the gift of God. You know fanning, isn't it? And engineers are here. You know how important the fanning of the fire is. That you can have very little fire. But when it fan, it's fanned, what happens? It glows into flames. So what he's telling him is, he's a young man, do it, fan it. That gift that you have, please do it. And that it would be the word for me, for our daughters. Fan that gift God has given you. Already it is there, we can see it. But what you need to do now so that you can make it grow and glow is to fan it so that it can grow. So you have some work to do. Then he tells them that they have been given the spirit. And the spirit they have been given is not the spirit of timidity, but the spirit that gives them power, love, and self-discipline. So to you, the Johnson's family, God has given you the spirit. And this is not the spirit of fear and timidity. It is the spirit that actually makes you powerful, that you are able to know what it, how, love, how to love, and also to give you self-discipline. So to you, the family of our departed brother, Noel, Susan, Shama Samara, and Sharon, we want to tell you, you have the Spirit of God. And it's not of fear and timidity, but it is the one that gives you power, love, and self-discipline. But let me also pick something that he's saying here. That we were chosen not because of anything, but because one of his grace. None of us here as believers can stand and say, it is out of our hard work that we are who we are. It is purely on the account of what? Grace. It's a gift of God that we've been given. Through Jesus Christ from the beginning of the time. And it is now being revealed through Christ. Who has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality. And I was thinking that this day, during the death of Jesus Christ, was very dark, isn't it? Yesterday and today. It's not a coincidence that we are doing the funeral of Noel today. It's quite memorable because Jesus was dead by this time. But can I tell you, there was a tomorrow morning. Amen. When Jesus Christ rose again. And so Paul says that Christ has destroyed death and has brought life and immortality. So it is eternity that Jesus has brought to life or to light through the gospel. So he concludes there by saying, that's why I'm suffering. Paul is going through suffering. He's actually in prison. He's sickling. He's saying, this is not the source of shame. I'm not ashamed of this. And elsewhere, he would say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. So for him, he says, I know. And if each one of us would have the conviction of, I know, it's the greatest, isn't it? It goes beyond huma human limitations. And he says, I know whom I have believed, and my heart is persuaded. What I have entrusted to him, he will preserve it. He will guard it until the last day. So brothers and sisters, ahead of us, there will be suffering. It, it will be there. There will be sickness. It will be there. But he's saying, I will guard what I've put in you until the last day. And that is the joy of being a believer in Jesus Christ. So lift up your hearts. Do not allow the loss of Noel to take your joy. And because Noel spoke, lived his entire life, loving Jesus, the best place for him would be where? In Jesus' hands, isn't it? 
Let's continue to pray for this family and support them. I'll now request the bishop to pray for this family. Let me ask for the family to stand so that the bishop can pray for you. Shall we pray? Lord of all grace, look unto thy servants, Susan, Samara, and Sharon. Look unto Samuel, look unto Bobby and their families. Look unto all the members and friends. We bring before you this, thy servants, that the conviction of their faith and the proclamation through their mouths over their belief in life hereafter, you become a source of strength as they continue to wait upon your return. We worship you and honor you for how Noel loved you, how he spoke of you, and how he acted about you. The faith he infused in his daughters, the faith he shared with his wife, and a blessed moment that he shared with the family. As they stand to declare that it's only in your name and only in your promises that he can never see a better tomorrow, we pray that he shall continue to have this confidence. In the moment of pain in their hearts and in their minds, we commend them into you, Heavenly Father, that you may provide answers, that you may enable them to envision the joy of eternity in which you have called and given their beloved Noel. We pray for what Noel hoped to accomplish with his wife and in his daughters and in the family. The many who looked up to him for counsel, the many whose faith has been greatly influenced out of his action, that this your servant's heavenly father may stand in his stand and continue to proclaim and glorify your holy name. Fill them with the joy of your presence. Fill them with the vibrancy of your spirit. Guide them with the eternal light that comes from thee, the light that shall take us home. Strengthen their physical bodies with the food and bread from heaven and provide to their material needs from your heavenly bounty. And as they stand and now prepare to go and inter the remains of Noel, I pray that you shall journey with them. And just as your servant Job will declare that it's only a few years and I shall take a journey of no return, that heavenly Father, they may look up to you for the great promises and their fulfillment. Be to them what the world cannot make them to be. Guide them where the world cannot lead them. And be to them where none of us can be in their very lives. May your blessings rest upon them. For this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. The next uh, program now will happen in Langata. We will follow those who are... Um, uh, Coming with us, uh, we'll follow uh, the um, the house, and we'll be led uh, to the grave, and there we'll not say much. It's only the last prayers, and we are done. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity to serve you. We can now sing "Blessed Assurance." Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. 
Please say bye bye to your uncle. Thank you. Any other family members? Please come. rest of us will help each other in filling back the, the grave before we do the reads. I think the people who know how to do this can guide us on how that will be done. Yes, the, the friends and, and workers, pick, pick the shovels and do it. Yes. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Friends, um, workers, colleagues. If we move, we will give uh, these people space.
going to do two things now as we come to the end. Number one is to bring this to a close with a prayer. And after that, uh, Roll will come and invite us to pay our last respect uh, to Noel. And we will be done. Let us then pray. Father, once again, we give you thanks for the life of our departed brother, Noel Johnson. And thank you for the years that you gave him. Would have loved to have him longer. But we have not lost because heaven has gained. We now pray that you help us as we transition in life without Noel. We pray for Susan, Samara, and Cheryl as they transition without a husband and father, respectively. That you give them the grace to adjust and continue to live a life without him being there physically. We pray for the siblings, especially here present, Samuel and Bobby. And pray that you will help them to adjust to a life without their brother being here physically. We pray for the nephews and nieces as they live without the uncle they loved. Father, we pray that all that Noel stood for will continue to influence this family to generations that, we sh that shall come. We pray for those that worked with Noel as colleagues and workers. Father, as they transition the company without him, we pray for wisdom. We pray for unity of mind and purpose. We pray for guidance of the power of the Holy Spirit. Where they need to address any challenge, they will come together. And so, Lord, we commend each one of us as friends and families into your hands as we now finally say bye-bye to him. Brothers and sisters, may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your heart and mind in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ. And now the blessing of God, the Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you now and always. Amen. Roll, please come. Uh, hi everyone. So we're going to honor Nolanko's graves by putting reeds and bouquets of flowers. Uh, can, I, can I first ask that his beloved wife, Susan Johnson, and the two lovely daughters, Samara and Sharon Johnson, put their eat. Now the next read will be from uh, Mrs. Jasmine Rubdi and Mr. Rajendra Rubdi, who are Nolanko's eldest sister and eldest brother-in-law. And now the next read will be placed on behalf of Major General Selva Johnson, 
and Sarah Johnson, who are Nolanko's oldest brother and oldest sister-in-law. I now invite his older brother, Mr. Samuel Johnson and Mrs. Evelyn Johnson to place the wreath. Now I invite his younger brother, Mr. Bobby Johnson, and his wife, Mrs. Rena Johnson, to place a wreath. The next wreath is laid on behalf of his mother-in-law, Mrs. Anama Matthew, his brother-in-law, Mr. A.F. Vergis, and his sister-in-laws, Mrs. Usha Vergis. This wreath is laid on behalf of his brother-in-law, Gigi Matthew, and his sister-in-law, Mrs. Alicia Matthew. The next wreath is laid on behalf of his sister-in-law, Mrs. Anu Matthew, and his brother-in-law, Mr. Shiji Matthew. The next wreath is laid on behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Koshi, who are Nolanko's eldest sister-in-law's Sarah Johnson's parents. Yeah. The next wreath will be placed on, I now invite uh, Mr. Daniel Paul, and his son, Kenneth Daniel, to place a wreath. I now invite Mr. Clary Dikuna and his son, Sean Dikuna, to, add, uh, to place a wreath. And now I invite Roshan Johnson to place a wreath on behalf of all nephews, nieces, grandnephew, and grandniece. I now welcome all friends and colleagues to place bouquets. Of Yes, I'm asking you all to please maintain social distance for safety precautions, please. Thank you very much. Okay, and now on behalf of Mrs. Lavinia Sanger and Anupam Sanger and Anya Sanger, we put some bouquet of flowers. And now on behalf of Mrs. Preeti Rubdi and uh, Preeti Hukeri and Girish Hukeri. On behalf of Mr. and Mrs. Sopnilan Dipali Johnson. On behalf of Catherine and Sanjay. On behalf, on behalf of Noel, Joel, Rachel, and Rebecca, 
Rachel and Ria. On behalf of Bobby Matthew, Amrita Matthew, and Zubin. On behalf of uh, Cyril Matthew and Elizabeth Matthew, Rina's parents. Sanger, put one more. on behalf of Verdan Johnson. On behalf of Joanne and Joshua. I now invite all friends, colleagues, to please place the bouquet to pay your respects. Mr. Harold Dongera to place one on behalf of NGA. And Mr. J. Paul. And now on behalf of folk, Mr. Einstein. invite all friends and colleagues, please go place for case. Thank you.
At this moment, I'd like to thank everyone present here, the Navjivan Assembly, folk, all the viewers at home. Thank you for joining us and putting my uncle to rest. May his soul rest in peace. Thank you.